In today's experiment, we are exploring polymers and the effects of ionic and molecular compounds on polymers. It's gonna be super fun. We don't have to do a lot of measuring. It's all qualitative, so let's jump in. I'm soaking this diaper in about 1.5 liters of water. That diaper's gonna swell up and that's because inside of it there is a polyacrylate which is a polymer and that's gonna really swell up once you introduce water into it and that's what we're gonna be using in our experiment so while the diaper soaks I'm going to prepare a sheet of wax paper the wax paper is what I'm going to be doing the experiment on I am going to scoop the polymer out onto the wax paper into little piles and sprinkle different compounds on them. So the compounds are going to be molecular and ionic like I said and this is a qualitative lab so we'll be studying the effects of those compounds on our polymer, the polyacrylate. This produces a ton of polyacrylate. At least. 12 people could do this experiment with one newborn diaper. So I'm gonna cut open the diaper and make sure not to dump out all the polymer at once. See how it really just swelled up. Makes kind of like a cool gel. So I'm gonna scoop out the polymers into little piles onto the wax paper. In my opinion, this is a great lab to understand the effects of ionic and molecular compounds on polymers it's all qualitative you don't have to measure out anything really and you just see with your eyes the reaction happening so i'm going to start with sand that's silicon dioxide sio2 and it's going to be about a quarter teaspoon of each solid onto the gel piles so this is table salt sodium chloride or NaCl and then we've got a common roadway de-icer this is calcium chloride or CaCl2 next is sodium carbonate Na2CO3 followed by Epsom salt magnesium sulfate MgSO4 and potassium carbonate that's K2CO3 and then urea that is CO and H2 and then two molecules of those NH2s sucrose C12H22O11 sucralose and that's C12H19Cl3O8 and lastly cornstarch and that's C6H10O5 so we're gonna let those sit on there for a while and examine the results As you can see, some of the gel piles have changed. They kind of look melted, and some of them haven't really changed at all. So there's some commonalities with the ones that we don't observe a physical change, and there's some commonalities with the compounds that did cause a physical change. So what do you think that is? Alright, and now I'm going to test some unknowns and compare them to the known results, just for fun. So I've got four unknowns, and I'm just going to prepare the wax paper and pretty much the experiment in the same fashion that I did for the knowns. And I'm just going to make sure that I label everything properly, and yeah, we're just going to sprinkle some compounds on there and see what we think. Are they molecular or ionic? Here's unknown number one. 
And that's, I'm guessing, about a quarter teaspoon. Unknown number two. Unknown number three. And unknown number four. So we're gonna examine and record our results and compare them to the knowns that we just tested. And now we're on to part B. I'm going to be testing the effects of certain ionic compounds on sodium alginate. It's a gel that's extracted from brown algae actually and it's used in a lot of food stabilization. So the first one we're testing is lithium chloride. I'm just going to scoop out a bit and make some solutions with these ions. Sodium chloride, potassium chloride coming up next. Followed by magnesium chloride. I'm not being super precise with my measurements and just trying to make a solution of these, so it's not a big deal. Calcium chloride, strontium chloride, and then in the last one, I'm putting both iron chloride and aluminum chloride into the same beaker. And then to each of these beakers, I'm going to add approximately 50 milliliters of water. So in this portion of the experiment, I'm making the ionic solutions and I'm going to drop the sodium alginate gel into the beakers. We're going to examine what happens during this time and try to draw some conclusions about the different ions that we're using, more specifically the cation and anion size in each compound and just kind of compare our results based on those relative sizes. So I've got the sodium alginate, and I'm going to pour out about 30 milliliters of that. And I've also got a disposable dropper here. Alright, our first ionic solution is lithium chloride. And I transferred some drops of sodium alginate into the solution. And I'm going to see what happens. Now on to the sodium chloride solution dropping a few drops on the top to see if I notice any changes from that and then I'm just transferring a bit of the sodium alginate into the solution and I'm going to record my observations. Next one is potassium chloride. Same thing, I'm doing a few drops seeing what happens, if anything happens, and then more sodium alginate. Alright, now I'm on to the magnesium chloride. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's a bit cloudy in the beaker. Calcium chloride. Swirl that around and see if I see anything moving.
in strontium chloride. And you guys can also find charts of the cation and anion sizes, like I was mentioning before. You should be able to find that online to compare. And here's the strontium chloride. Kind of hard to see, but we've got some little polymers floating around in there. They look like little jellyfish. It's pretty cool. And then our last one is iron chloride and the aluminum chloride solution. Did a few drops in there. And that actually was the first time that I noticed that the droplets had a physical change in the solution. So I'm going ahead with the alginate and the rest of it. And look at that. That's pretty cool. So some of these beakers have a little bit of undissolved solid, but I don't think that's really going to affect what we're doing here. There's magnesium chloride. See that cloudiness that I was talking about earlier? And the calcium chloride. Strontium chloride. And then the last one is the iron and aluminum. That's probably the most prominent reaction that I've seen. Alright, and just an overview of those beakers. And what do you think about the relative cation and anion sizes of the ions that we used in the solutions? Right, and that's the end of our experiments. Thanks for watching, and if you guys have any questions at all, let me know. I hope you learned something, and I hope it was cool to watch.